I want to talk about the nature of loads and define maybe what a load is. So when we put a load on a battery, you know, on a power source of some type, so I've got a battery here, DC battery, or you know, I've got my power supply here, I can also even put a load on this guy, which is a function generator. It will give me very low voltage, but it gives me AC voltage. You know, obviously I can plug a, a load into the wall. What am I talking about loads? So is this a load? Well, it's a motor. Actually, it's probably more than a motor. But yeah, it's a load for sure. Um, and what about this? I mean, this puts a load on something. So if I hook this up to this, I can do work with this. This is actually a pump, so I can pump air with this, and that's doing work. The other thing is that, um, wait a second, a light bulb. What if, what if I put a light bulb on here? Am I doing work? Well, yeah, actually, actually, I'm taking the, the charge that's in here that's been put in here, it's actually electrical, uh, electrochemical energy that's in here, and I'm making it do work by producing light. The other thing that we know that these do is they produce a lot of heat, so it's an incandescent light bulb. Um, what about a, another, just a little motor? It's a load. So I just, I want you to get used to using a term that's called a load. Wait a second, what if I were just to grab a resistor, right? This is maybe a little bit of a larger resistor, and hook that up directly to my battery, or maybe if I were to put this in a circuit, say in series somewhere, so there wasn't a lot of current running through it, would it be a load? Well, yeah, it's actually doing something with the energy. And now we know that there's this voltage drop across any kind of load or any kind of thing with a resistance. So what we're gonna see is that every load is a some type of resistor or it has some form of resistance. Actually, when we get into AC, the concept of resistance actually changes a little bit depending on what kind of load we use, but we won't talk about that. I just want to kind of just stick with DC and just kind of get into the concept of a load. Now, we know that um, any load has resistance. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the term load when I'm talking about anything with resistance. So this DC motor has resistance. Um, this light bulb has got resistance. I've got this really other cool thing here that is actually a force transducer. Um, this thing has resistance. It has really high resistance, but it's really cool because when you put a force on it, the resistance changes. So I think with that, I just introduced you to the concept of some things, actually this isn't a load, it's just a transducer. It's designed specifically to change resistance depending on the load we put on it actually, uh, depending on the force that you put onto it. So essentially what's going on is that I want to talk about changing resistance or the nature of a load changing. So I think this will help you a little bit now that you understand that any load has resistance and we can look at anything with resistance as a load. And I think you can imagine that the load on this changes. I mean this is a pump. Depending on how much stress it's under, how much work it's doing, the load would change. So does it mean the resistance would change depending on how much work this is doing? Um, what about this light bulb? This light bulb takes you know, the, the energy from the voltage and it turns it into heat and light. Um, while it's doing so, I mean, would the resistance change? I mean, does the nature of the load change? Well, kind of. What's this load like now? Well, nothing, it's not doing any work. Does the resistance of this differ from when it's not doing work to when it is doing work? Does the resistance of this differ from when it is doing work or not doing work? Actually, the answer to that is, well, let's find out. So, um, actually, let's just play with this first because it's really cool. I'm going to hook this thing up and um, I'm just going to study its resistive nature. So, uh, I know that this has a really, really high resistance. So, I'm gonna, I, my meter goes up to 20 mega ohms. This thing is actually more than 20 mag ohms when there's no force on it. So I'm not going to use the word load on this, although you have to be careful about load. So if I put a weight on this, we can kind of consider that a load. But right now I'm just kind of looking at electrical loads, but it means that they're doing some work. So I'm just going to say I'm going to put force on this thing. Okay, good. Watch this. So right now my DMM shows that it's really high resistance. As I press down, watch this. It's so cool. As I pre oh, look at that. Oh, it's gone to like one mega ohm. Let's see if I can make it really light. Two mega ohms, three mega ohms, 
see if I can get up to four or five. So as I'm slowly taking my finger off this, it's pretty cool. And it's actually pretty linear too. Actually is quite linear. So as I increase the load, so if, if I put twice as much load, my resistance would decrease. Now this is down, going down and down and down and down and down and down. So I've gone to pretty, it's a pretty small number. I'm gonna go down to two megs to see if I can get this even smaller. So the lowest load I can get, yeah, it looks like I can go down to uh, 50 kilo ohms. Let me see. Okay, there we go. 50, 60 kilo ohms. So that's pretty cool. So what's going on is this is an example of a thing that changes its resistance, depending how much force is on it. But it's actually not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the nature of a load. Now this isn't actually a load. It's just a what we call a transducer. A transducer actually, it transduces something into something else or it turns something into something else so it's turning force it's turning an attribute of nature somehow we actually you know can turn these into sensors so or we can kind of call it a sensor but I like to call it a transducer because it actually takes force and it turns it into we can actually use that to create an electrical impulse or it changes the electrical nature of this device we often call those things transducers well, let's just put this aside for now. What I want to do is go back to what's going on here. I've got a really cool resistor here. What I want to do is I want to study the resistance of this, and then I want to see if the resistance changes if I you know, make it go. So um, if I want to measure the resistance of this, I'm going to put it down. It's, kind of, you know, it's going to be really low, actually. It's, I think it's at 3.7 ohms. But let's just put this on here and see what's going on. Okay, good. So now I'm going to let that thing... Actually, I'm just going to put it down and let it settle. It's gonna settle, it's gonna go down, it's slowly sneak. Oh, do you know what, when I measured it at first, it was 3.7 ohms, let me just put that maybe in there. There we go, I think, look at that, that was a loose connection. Connections are so very important. I just wanna even, you know what, I'm just gonna get rid of this connection completely, and I'm gonna use this guy. This one's a little bit better. Connections are so very important. Okay, good. So, um, I'm going to put this guy on here. Now I can just let it go, let it alone, and we'll see it's kind of... So I'm just going to wait for 3.2 ohms, 3.33... Why, why is it changing? And let me just put a little bit of pressure on here. A little force. There we go. Okay, wow, isn't it? So what's going on? How, how do I decide what this is? What do I do about this? And why is it changing anyway? Let me just kind of hold that a little bit more and... Wow, look at that. What's going on? That's cool how it changes. Man. Why is it changing? What's going on? Why, why is that actually happening? Any thoughts about that? Well, there are a lot of things going on here. There's a, maybe a loose connection. And actually, we might see that the temperature of this changes the nature of its resistance. But let me just see if I can get this thing to settle a little bit. So sometimes we have to struggle with these things to actually get them to kind of stop moving around a bit. It could be I've got a poor connection or poor solder on here. So often what is a good thing to do is just kind of let it go and let it settle. This thing should settle around three or four ohms, but it seems to be kind of going around six or 6.3. It's floating a bit, but there we go. So now we've got it stabilized a little bit. I'm gonna go for 6.7 ohms. There you go, that's nice. So I'm gonna write that down. So here we go, I'm gonna write 6.7 ohms. So I'm gonna undo this guy. So now let's do some math on here. It's designed to run on five volts. So I'm gonna do some math on here and I'm gonna do this. What, how much current would go through this if I put uh, a certain voltage to it, five volts? So I'm just gonna go current equals five volts divided by 6.7 ohms and I'm just going to calculate that. We're going to find out what the current, you know, should be uh, running through this. So 5 divided by 6.7, and that's going to be just under 1. So I've got, oh, my calculator. Just put new batteries in it. I don't have it on engineering notation. Just, you know what, I have to fix that. Okay, so I'm going to go to mode, and then I'm going to go over to engineering, and hit enter, and clear, and enter again. Okay, good. So now I've got 740. 46 milliamps. So I'm going to write that down. So that equals 746 milliamps. Okay, so the resistance of this thing is uh, 6.7 ohms. We've measured that, so we know that's what it is. And I know the voltage. If I put five volts across it, which I'm going to do, um, I, I can expect that current to be uh, 7.46. Now, if the resistance changes, 
that current's going to change. I mean, I'm going to stand to reason. We did kind of postulate that maybe, maybe as the load changes, the resistance of that might change. So let's take a look at that. You know, I'm going to measure the current coming out of this thing, uh, and then from there, we're going to be able to kind of analyze the resistance. Because as you know, as we all know, we cannot measure the, uh, the resistance of something while current is flowing through it. So I'm going to put this guy on DC. I'm going to put it down. To, I'm not going to get a lot of current out of it. So I'm going to put my meter to 2. And then I'm going to have the power coming out of here. And that's going to go into my load. And then I'm going to go back to here. Okay, here we go. So this guy's back here. So now let's see how kind of, what kind of current we've got. Okay, my light bulb's on. And I've got, and that's volts, yeah, because I know how to set my meter. Oh, that's the, I'm a little special. Okay, so what I need to do is find, okay, current DC. Well, oh, i got to go all the way down there. So I'm going to go to 200 milliamps. It looks like it's a little bit more than that. There we go. So now, that's reading amps. So that's 1,500 milliamps. Okay, so that's 50. Oh, wait a second. But aren't we supposed to have 746 milliamps? Why do I have 1,500? Because the resistance changed. Let's actually calculate the resistance. Okay, I can do that. So I know resistance equals voltage over current. Now my voltage is going to be 5 volts. That's not changing. I've got 5 volts up here. My resistance, and my current in this case, is 150 milliamps. So I'm going, to, whoop, I'm going to do that. I'm going to say 5 divided by 150 milliamps uh, minus 3 is equal to 33 ohms. 33 ohms. Wait a second. Didn't we just measure this at a resistance? It was a lot lower, like 6.7 ohms. But all of a sudden it went to 33. Well, I think you know the reason behind that. Okay, I can't actually, I was going to be like, oh, that hurts, but it doesn't. But I can feel that it's warm. So actually, when this thing heats up, you know what? Do you realize how hot that is? Like, look at the temperature of that. Okay, you can actually calculate how hot it is depending on the temperature, but we won't get into the physics of that. What I'm saying is that filament is ridiculously hot. So um, what we've just kind of seen is that resistance changes depending on the temperature of whatever the resistance is, of, of whatever the, of the material that the resistance is. Now, in this case, that's a tungsten filament. Um, and tungsten can get really super ridiculously hot and not break down, and that's why they make light bulbs out of tungsten. So what we've done here is we've studied the fact that the resistance of a bulb changes depending on you know if it's doing work or not. And we also have to keep that in mind because if you were to just go and measure the resistance of a resistor uh, and then calculate how much current it's going to be you know drawing, and in that case we said it should be drawing 764 milliamps. And then I went and put a fuse in for, like, say, 800 or 900 or 1,000 milliamps. I might be okay. But you know what? That fuse is really never going to blow if something kind of fails or something gets weird and funky in the circuit. Because actually, you know, it's only drawing 150 milliamps. So we've actually got to measure the current at any time. Whenever we put a load on, we can estimate what kind of current that we think we're going to get. But once we plug it in, you'll see, actually, that the current changes. Now... This is going to be really cool. Check this out. What I want to do is I want to run this motor. Put my big old lead acid battery over there. So this guy is an air pump. What I want to do is I want to measure the resistance of this. Um, actually, no, let's just do this one. I got a little motor here. Let's measure the resistance of this motor. So I'm going to plug this guy in here. I'm going to undo this guy. And I'm going to put this guy over here. Let's measure the resistance of this motor. So now, when I measure the resistance of this motor, what I'm actually doing is I'm just measuring the resistance of the actual coil itself. The coil is not actually the thing directly doing the work. I mean, you know, we can't do the work in this motor. can't do work without the coil. It's going to go back to this. It's going to go back 57 ohms. It won't be exactly 57 ohms because it's still producing a magnetic field and there's still some other stuff going on there. But what's happening is that as I put a load on this, as I, as I ask this motor to do more work, the magnetic field is actually kind of fighting another magnetic field that's actually in the the um, the permanent magnet that's in here. Now you've got to go study motors; they're so cool. But check out my video on Lenz's law, and it'll explain a little bit of what's going on. Why a magnetic field actually creates resistance? It actually creates resistance called something called back EMF. We're not going to get into that. What I want to say here is the fact that 
the resistance of this changed as I'm putting a load on it because the current changed and we know that current and resistance are inversely proportional and if I decrease the resistance I'm going to increase the current. So what happened here? The current went up so the resistance of this decreased. So it was the, the actual resistance of um, the coil is 33 ohms. As I get it to do work it's going to go down quite a bit. But the thing is the resistance of the coil really doesn't have a lot to do with the work that this is doing. Again, it's a whole other thing, but right now I just want to go back to the point where we're seeing that depending on the nature of the load, how much work it's doing, its resistance changes. So we really have to be careful when we go and calculate fuse sizes and calculate our power supply, whatever we need. We can't just go measure the static resistance of something. We have to actually hook it up and make it run and go measure the current. Now, let's hook up this guy. It's really cool. So this is a 12 volt motor. So I'm going to crank this up a little bit. Uh, let's run it. Actually, let's measure the resistance of this guy. Can I do that? I'm just going to pull this out so I can, I can, my brain can handle it. There's too many wires. So, I'm going to go over here, okay, good, 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 and we're going to do this guy, okay, so let's go down by one, okay, three, four hundred, just, just put it down, let go of it, it's kind of floating, it's floating all over the place, you know, when we get into, here we go, some resistances, um, connections, look, connections make such a difference, it's floating all over the place, okay, there we go, I've got a really good connection, wait, isn't it fascinating how connection is such a big part of um, measurement? There we go. Now I'm, I'm holding this positive. I'm finding that look at this floating around a little bit. There, the fl it's floating because of the connection, and the, maybe the coil in here is changing temperature. I'm, I'm looking at it, it's floating around four five. I'm gonna just go for four hundred. Now we can do the math and calculate, you know, what the resistance is actually gonna be if we put a load on it. But what I want to do is just put a load on it. So um, I'm going to go from here and into this guy and um, then I'm going to come out of here and I'm going to go into my motor and this is pretty cool. The polarity of this doesn't actually matter. I mean the, the, the actual mechanism rotates the opposite way but there's a really cool kind of diaphragm pump thing in here um, that's just awesome and um, we won't get into that. But So this is a 12 volt motor. I can actually put it up to 14, by the way, a DC motor. If you go buy a 12 volt DC motor, you can run it at 24 volts. Who doesn't like it? I mean, you know, you can run it on say 18. As long as you don't put a load on it, it's gonna be okay because it, it has to do, the motor actually has to do with how much work you ask it to do. So if I were to put it, run this on eight volts and still ask it to do a lot of work, it wouldn't be that happy. I mean, it's only designed you know, the wattage of this is designed to handle a certain wattage. So if you get a 100 watt motor, you know that if you hook it up on a lower voltage, it's not going to do 100 watts of work, 100 joules per second. But you can actually ask it to do more than 100 joules per second. It's just designed to be able to do that. So if you, if you get your target voltage is pretty much whatever it's rated for, um, and then you can stick within the data sheet that this thing is rated for. But, you know, if you run it a, a little higher voltage, it's okay, as long as you don't stress it too much. Okay, so let's put it up to 14, because the reason I want to put it to 14 is because when I put it up to 14, I can get just barely an amp out of it. So, 14.5, turn this guy on. Okay, that's my, oh, it's only 280 milliamps. Let's see what we can do about that. There's air coming out of here. Right now, it, this motor is doing work. It's taking air in here and it's pushing it out there. It's turning a motor. I mean, the motor's turning a mechanism. There's actually a shaft in the motor that's turning. So, motors, we can say the motor's doing the work, but let's just say that the magnetic field and the coil and the electromagnet in here are doing work and they're making things turn. And then in, in turn, right, this thing is a pump. This is the prime mover for a pump cool word. So the prime mover for this pump is actually, this is a mechanism that's actually designed to take mechanical energy and turn it into actually pneumatic energy. Pretty cool. So uh, I'm going to turn that guy on. Now watch this. I'm going to stress this. I'm going to load this. I'm going to make this do some work. And the way I'm actually going to do this is I'm actually going to make it compress air. Yeah. But the compressed air is actually going to be in this tube. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to throttle the air coming out of here. And as I do that, watch the current. 
I'm just throttling it slightly. So I'm, I'm blocking it a little bit. Now I'm blocking it a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And actually, I can get this current up pretty high. I got it up to an amp before. Okay, so as I'm doing this, what's going on is it's still the flow is still happening. It's pressurizing air in here. That's kind of some of the work it's doing. And it's also doing work just pushing the air through here and stuff. We won't get into like actually the dynamics of air, pneumodynamics, pretty cool term. Um, but what we're gonna just gonna do is see if I can stress this motor. See if I can get an amp out of it. I have to keep it flowing. I have to allow it to still flow. Wait, wait, 700, 700, 700. I can't get it over 700. Wow, let me crank it up. Wow, I got it to 18 volts now. Let's see if I can get it up to an amp. 700. I can't get it, well, it's kind of weird. I, I'm pretty sure I got it up to an amp before. But what's happening? Okay, 737. Seven. I'm gonna, you know what? Let me just go up really higher. Okay, this is, I shouldn't be doing this very long with this motor. It's a 12 volt motor. I've got it running almost double. There, I got an 8. Can I get it up to 9? Okay, let me put it back down. So I couldn't get it up to an amp. You know what? I want to show you this. Watch this. Okay, we know the current's going to go up. Ready? Watch this. Okay, I'm going to get that current up to 5. Okay, 500 milliamps. What if I just block it? Ready? The current's going down. I mean, if I just let the air flow a little bit, I can get it up to 600, 660 milliamps. What if I block it? What's going on? Well, it has to do with the amount of work that this thing's doing. Right now, it's actually not really doing any work. I mean, it is doing a lot of work. Sorry, we can see the current, and we know that actually power, or the concept of work, is you know a rate of use of energy, which is power. So the power is the current times the voltage, and we know that. So if I wanted to know the power here, I'd take eight volts and multiply it by um, 450 milliamps, and I'd get the power. And if I do this, if I get it up to just just under 700 milliamps, it's actually doing more work. Well, that's because if I block the air, well, there's no air flowing, and the flow of the air is part of the work of this thing. Anyway, we won't get into to the pneumodynamics of that. What I just wanted to show you here was the fact that the resistive nature of a load, yeah, I'm kind of using a new term, the resistive nature of a load, and because the, resist, the resistance of this actually has to do with what's called back EMF. So there's this back, there's this voltage that's back, that's pushing. So it's not actually directly resistance, um, but it's pushing uh, th this. Th so we get the energy from this guy, and it's kind of fighting that energy. And it actually kind of, it does some really cool things. That actually creates resistance. But as we actually change the load, it actually pushes back more and or less. And actually, we saw the current going up. So it actually pushes back less and, and more current is flowing through. So we can say that the resistance lowers, um, but I'm just gonna say the nature of the resistance lowers because it's not actually directly resistance. It is directly resistance with this guy because this guy is just a resistive element, that's it. And if we were to study this with a uh, one of the resistors, we would see that its temperature, sorry, its, its current would change and we would see that its resistance changes depending on its temperature. Actually, we could just hook a, um, uh, a resistor up directly to this thing and heat it up and, and you'd see that the resistance changes. So there you go. I think you have a really good understanding of the fact that you know, any kind of load, the nature of its resistance is going to change depending on how much work you ask it to do. That's it. Okay, bye.